Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Guns and Guitars, and today we're going to be looking at the best hand rubbed satin finishes for your guitar. Now, true story, I actually found the best hand rubbed satin finish for my guitars, and then a larger company bought them out and discontinued the product line. So that sent me on this journey to find the best suitable alternative. Now that basically means that I'm making a video for you that I wish somebody had made for me last year about this time. So if you wanna learn what I learned in this process, like say the difference between an oil varnish blend and a wiping varnish, and figure out which of these finishes is gonna be the best for your guitars, then stick around. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, let's get started. Alright guys, in this video I'm going to be telling you about and showing you examples of four different types of finishes you can use on your guitar. We have a wiping varnish, an oil varnish blend, two different types of polyurethane, and a shellac. Now if you've been following the guitar building on my channel for pretty much any length of time, you know that my hands down favorite guitar finish was Formby's Tongue Oil Finish. Unfortunately, Formby's got bought out by Minwax and the entire product line disappeared. So naturally the first product that I was prone to trying was Minwax Tongue Oil Finish. I really had hoped that they had just absorbed Formby's and then rebranded the Formby's Tongue Oil Finish as their own. Boy, I could not have been more wrong. And that was actually when I learned the difference between an oil varnish blend and a wiping varnish. Formby's was actually a wiping varnish and the Minwax Tongue Oil Finish is actually an oil varnish blend. Now the easiest way to tell the difference between the two is to simply read the application instructions. Formby's Tongue Oil Finish, the directions say that you are supposed to apply a very small amount, working it deep into the wood grain, and then once it dries you buff it lightly with steel wool and then reapply it. Minwax Tongue Oil Finish, being an oil varnish blend, is a completely different application. You're supposed to put it on very generously, let it sit, and then wipe away the excess. The real difference between a wiping varnish and an oil varnish blend is the longevity. So this Minwax Tongue Oil Finish and then other finishes that are like it, like Danish Oil or Teak Oil for example, I know a lot of you guys mentioned that I should try those out, is that they actually need to be reapplied over time. That's not so great for guitars. It's fine for furniture because, you know, if you've got an end table or a dining table, then every once in a while you can just wipe on another coat and call it good. But for a guitar, that means stripping the whole thing down, putting on another coat, and then building it back up. So we don't want that. We want a finish that will last forever. I used this on my 2x4 and OSB base that I built last year. I was not super thrilled with the results, first and foremost. It was nothing like Formby's. And secondly, here we are a year later, I love playing that bass, I've played it often, but the finish is wearing off and it's gonna need another coat, which is extremely frustrating for me. Now honestly, that is just unacceptable for a guitar finish, which is why I don't recommend using an oil varnish blend for guitar finishes at all. So, Minwax Tongue Oil Finish, out of the contest. So now knowing that Formby's was a wiping varnish and knowing how to identify a wiping varnish, I set out to find the best wiping varnish for a suitable replacement. And so that search led me to Birchwood Casey's True Oil. This is probably the number one recommended hand rubbed oil guitar finish that you guys have been telling me to use for years and years. I just didn't have any incentive to because I already had one that I liked. But reading the application instructions on this, it's actually exactly the same as Formby's Tongue Oil Finish. The only difference is that it only has a two hour dry time as opposed to Formby's six hour dry time, which actually makes it quite a bit better. Being that it's meant to be a gunstock finish, I knew that holding up to UV and weather elements is not gonna be an issue. So I went ahead and tried it on my first instrument. And that was my sort of Franken Rickenbacker jazz bass mashup that you guys saw me build a couple weeks ago. I gotta say, I was thrilled with the results from the True Oil. And I think you guys probably were too, based on the feedback I got on that video and the fact that that bass sold within an hour of that video going live. Not to mention the 12 other people that tried to buy it after it already sold. Like I said, I really like the fast two hour dry time and the finish just goes on buttery smooth layer after layer. Now I did three or four coats I think on that base. I know some people will do like 20 or 30 coats to really build up a high gloss. So that's another benefit to this is that you can kind of just adjust the sheen that you're going for based on how many coats you put on. 
I got to three or four coats and I thought it was a perfect satin sheen. I thought it felt really good. It was adequately protected. And so I stopped there. But you can keep going layer after layer and take it up to a brilliant gloss. I will say though, the one downside to True Oil is it does add sort of a yellowish amber hue to your instrument. So when I put it on the bare maple neck, it changed it from more of a white wood to more of a yellow wood. And when I put it on the blue, it kind of made it a little greenish. Now that was something that Formby's did. I think maybe this probably does it a little bit more, but in most cases, it really just means it makes your color more vibrant, but just know going into it that it might affect your color outcome. So all in all, I would definitely say that True Oil is probably your best available option right now for a wiping varnish finish. But I didn't wanna just limit this video to wiping varnishes. I wanted to try out a few other options. So moving on to the polyurethanes. First, we have Minwax Wipe-On Oil-Based Polyurethane. Now, originally I was put off to this stuff because I wasn't getting very good results. But as I've become a better craftsman and I've had more practice with this, I actually got excellent results using this stuff on the countertops in my freshly remodeled motorhome, which made me want to try it again on an instrument. So I used this stuff on that fretless piezo base that I built out of scrap wood for my uncle's cabinets. If you guys caught that video. And I was, again, very pleased with the results. I applied this the same way that I would apply a wiping varnish. I put it on. This is a two to three hour dry time. So I put it on, let it dry, buffed it with steel wool, and then proceeded to apply another coat. I ended up doing, again, about three or four coats, and I was happy with the results. I think that it gave a really nice sheen, but like before, it does have a tendency to feel a little bit plasticky if you put on too much of it. And so I think that's what I learned is that if you just do a thin layer at a time, buff it back with steel wool, you can get pretty decent results. Now, a few people had recommended that I try this, but more than a few people have recommended that I try water-based varathane polyurethane finish. This is something that I've heard from you guys over and over and over again, and myself personally liking oil-based finishes, I never really considered a water-based finish until now. As long as I'm testing out all the different ways to hand rub finish a guitar, it would be a disservice to not try this stuff out. Now this stuff, I think I probably just need more practice because I got sort of mixed results. I used this to finish a Skyway 24 that a custom builder had sent me to finish that I got to just do the finish on and the wiring and electronics, which is totally my jam. If any other custom builders out there want to send me a pre-finished neck and body for me to just wire up and put whatever finish on, I'm totally game for that. But that's not what this video is about. So I tried out this finish on that guitar and this stuff does have a two hour dry time as well, making it very easy to work with. I put on a thin coat, buffed it back with steel wool the same way I did with the other finishes and then applied another thin coat. I believe I landed on four coats with this stuff before I got the results that I was looking for. And those results are absolutely immaculate on the back of the neck of this guitar. The sheen looks absolutely beautiful. It plays and feels really smooth on my hands. It feels a lot less plasticky than the oil-based polyurethane. And I think that's just because of the water-based formula. The water-based formula also dries a little bit harder, giving you a little bit more scratch and dent protection. Applying it was interesting. It's kind of like working with Elmer's glue. It's a really thick, milky consistency that dries clear. Now, like I said earlier, I got kind of mixed results with it. The back of the neck is perfect. And if I'd gotten the whole guitar to feel and look like the back of the guitar neck, then we would have no issues with this whatsoever. But I'm not sure what I did differently on the body, but the body itself is sort of patchy, so to speak. When you look at it in the sun, it kind of glistens more in some spots than others. And again, that probably was me and the way I applied it, and I probably just need to practice with it more. I will say that my wife, who has an excellent eye for design, keeps saying that her eyes are drawn to the finish on this guitar, that it has some sort of shimmer to it that my other guitars don't have. So take that for what it's worth. It's definitely worth something, and I'm trying to figure out what that something is so that I can replicate it. But in conclusion, I think that this is an excellent viable option. I just need more practice with it. And the last finish that we're gonna be looking at today is shellac. Now shellac is way different than the rest of these products in that it is 100% natural and 100% non-toxic. In fact, there are even some candy manufacturers that use shellac to coat their candy to protect and preserve it. So if we were working with any food grade furniture like a cutting board or a salad bowl, then this is definitely the go-to. Now I had never worked with shellac and I didn't really know what to expect. 
But what I found out in relation to finishing guitars is that this stuff is a real hidden gem. I don't hear of anybody using shellac to finish guitars, but the results that I got were absolutely stellar. Firstly, let's talk about the 30 minute dry time. That's right, 30 minutes dries to touch, dries to recoat in one hour. That means you could put on four, five, even six coats of this stuff and have a completely finished guitar in less than a day. Now this particular brand of shellac, the Zinzer Bullseye brand, I chose that because it's a brand that I trust. I use a lot of their other products. It's available in an amber and a clear hue. So if you do like the yellowing effect because it makes your colors more vibrant, then you can choose the amber tint, but I used the clear tint and I gotta say, it's very clear. I still expected it to be yellow for some reason, but it goes on actually very clear. And you can just see the depth and dimension that this thing brought out of the burl finish on this Telecaster. Now this stuff I found out kind of requires lots of practice to get a good finish, but it's also very forgiving. The first time that I applied this stuff, I got lots of patchiness, spots that were really glossy, spots that were really not glossy, and drips and runs and things like that. But I was able to buff it all out evenly with steel wool. So you put this stuff on, you wait an hour, you go back, you rub it with steel wool, and if you do a sloppy job like I did the first time, it takes quite a bit of elbow grease to buff it back smooth. But I did eventually get it back smooth, and then I repeated the process. Now each additional coat got more and more sticky, which was very interesting. And like I said, it just kind of took practice, but it's very forgiving. And with this stuff, unlike the other products, which worked better with multiple thin coats, this stuff kind of worked better with thicker coats. So the burl top and the neck, I did three coats on, but the rest of the body, I actually just did two thick coats. And it left me with the same sheen and the same level of protection that I got from the three coats in just two coats. So with one hour dry time, and only two coats, you could have your guitar finished in two hours. And that's definitely awesome. So I'm curious, now that you guys have seen the results that I got with these, which one do you think is best? And is there one that I missed that you think that I absolutely hands down need to try? Explain to me why down in the comments. And if you wanna learn more about this awesome Eerie Guitars Skyway 24, I've got a couple more videos on that coming up. So make sure you're subscribed. I'm Dan, this is Guns of Guitars, and I will see you in that next video.